This is the penultimate part of my Michael Manley interview. I've titled it, Edna Manley Dies. It's sad and somber at the start. You'll hear Margaret Wiley playing Amazing Grace. And then after that, we'll hear more from Michael Manley on the good and bad of politics, his successes and some dark moments. Well, at this time during the program, we normally have Margaret's melody. Not that she doesn't play throughout our programs, but it's a special time. And this indeed is a special occasion, Marjorie. Your melody, please. Yes. It's extraordinary that you play that because that that brings to mind something that that Din and I talk about a lot and speculate about and that is let me explain why that bit of music um, which I love and everybody loves has this special significance the I go to jog one morning and what's it 1986 late 86 and on the way home, I, who never, ever have sing at jogging or coming home, suddenly find myself singing that. Sing. Then I've talked about over and over, how does this happen? Things like this happen. Arrive home tragically to find that my mother has died. And I'm thinking, why? What's the connection with me singing that all the way home? And I come home to find that she has already died, unknown to me, when I'm singing it to discover later that day that the day before a friend had brought her two different versions of it and she had been playing it the evening that she died and I who have never sung it before in my life and you come and play it now two different said, versions and two different versions and what was interesting was there was two different versions mm -hmm. and she was listening apparently to the two different versions talking to this friend about the sort of resonance of the music and there am I singing it on the way home. Now you explain that. We we talk about it all the time, you know, these extraordinary sort of I call it synchronicity behind synchronicity. events. That's what I call it, synchronicity. You, you, can't, you can't explain. It's not coincidence that that happened that no, morning. It, it can not be coincidence. No. It's not coincidence. No. It wasn't. Extraordinary. Now, as Prime Minister of Jamaica, you must have had some wonderful moments, but also some burdensome moments. In a nutshell, could you say perhaps what has been your success as Prime Minister and perhaps your darkest moment as Prime Minister? Well, I think the thing that, I, I think that I, two things that I look back on with satisfaction, is that the word? I'm not sure what is the word. I am very glad that one had the opportunity to carry out what I still think is the greatest social revolution in Jamaica's history. The massive changes in educational opportunity, justice under the laws for women, for children, they talk what they like. Those things are a glorious chapter in Jamaica's history. And they created immense pride in people, an immense sense that this country was theirs and that the laws would say so and that the educational opportunities would say so. And so that is a matter of immense pride. Also, 
two things that are related to that. I think that in because I was intensely aware of the international environment and tried to evolve a Jamaican position of significance in the world, although some of what we hoped didn't happen and some in the end did happen, like uh, apartheid was defeated in the end, the international economic order, we just couldn't bring it to happen. But I detect that many Jamaicans suddenly saw themselves as something in the world, that we were important enough to have a view and not be everybody's little patsy and stooge. And so that is associated also with the fact that it was galvanic for Jamaica to have been willing to take on the bauxite companies, although we didn't really want to, but we felt we had to, and that we did the bauxite levy, made Jamaica Literally, you people Jamaicans don't know, that resonates all around the world to this day. This country that stood up for right with, with its own mineral resources. So all of those give me a great feeling. That's one of the greatest experiences I ever had. In 1980, I was in that big tower hotel in Otrius. And I knew we were losing. I mean, only, only a fool wouldn't have known that we were going to take the most crushing defeat of all time and enough respect. People speak to people speak. And I remember looking down with all the sadness that goes with that year. And, you know, of course you're sad to know you're going to be beaten. And I looked down at the beach and I saw scores, forgive me, of black people and ordinary people. And I said, but no matter how they lick me now, I know I helped make that happen in Jamaica. Well, these and are, that is glory. Absolutely. These are your successes. What would you say was but your... The greatest sadness yes. that we were plunged into totally unnecessary violence. That is the scar I would carry to my grave. There was no need for it. It was done deliberately. It was done maliciously. It was done cynically. Stories were spread that I was bringing communism to Jamaica. I, who could no more be communist than I could fly over the moon. Much more a Democrat than many of those who accused me and accused me at the time. And because we were dealing with countries like Cuba on a basis of principle to struggle for better justice for sugar, apartheid struggle, etc. They saw the opening and some of our own young radicals were being very stupid at the time too. And you know, giving an excuse. And Jamaica was put to the sword. Thousands of people died in the end. on this lie that Jamaica was being saved from communism, total lie. And we have paid a price, you hear me, that we have not recovered from yet for what happened. Well, certain things just cannot be explained. Like Michael Manley humming Amazing Grace. He was not in the habit of humming hymns to discover that his mother had been listening to two versions of Amazing Grace before she died. Oh boy. Also, there was more about the good and the bad of politics. <laughs> what did he see as his successes? What did he see as his darkest moments as Prime Minister of Jamaica? Thank you for listening. This is Faye Ellington. <laughs>